go in depth today on the Second Amendment. As you know from the Constitution, the Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Historically, this issue of the Second Amendment has been an interesting one for federalism. Until 2008, the Supreme Court hadn't made a ruling on the Second Amendment since 1939. Traditionally, the court had ruled that the states had the right to limit the Second Amendment as they saw fit. And so we literally had like 50 different state policies or interpretations on what gun control could mean or look like. Um, and historically, the courts have interpreted the Second Amendment to mean that unregulated militias could mean just talking about like people in the military actually owning guns. Because the Second Amendment hadn't been incorporated into the Constitution, Americans had different rights at the federal level than at the state level and in between different states in regard to gun ownership and self-defense. This was until the D.C., the District of Columbia versus Heller decision in 2008. From Oyas, they give background on this case. They said provisions of the District of Columbia's code made it illegal to carry an unregistered firearm and prohibited the registration of handguns, though the police chief could issue one-year licenses for handguns. The code also contained provisions that required owners of lawfully registered firearms to keep them unloaded and disassembled or bound by a trigger lock or other similar devices unless firearms were located in a place of business or being used for legal recreational activities, like obviously hunting. Um, Dick Heller was a D.C. police officer who was authorized to carry a handgun while on duty. He applied for a one-year license for a handgun he wished to keep at home, but his application was denied. Heller sued the District of Columbia. He sought an injunction against the enforcement of the relevant parts of the code and argued that they violated his Second Amendment right to keep a functional firearm in his home without a license. The district court dismissed the complaint. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia reversed it and held that the Second Amendment protects the right to keep firearms in the home for the purposes of self-defense. And the District of Columbia's requirement that firearms kept in the home be non-functional violated that right. So that case then goes on to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, for the first time in U.S. history, ruled in a 5-4 to four decision for Heller. The court reinterpreted the term militia as not just meaning people in the military, and they reinterpreted the amendment to mean a quote-unquote guarantee and an individual right to possess and carry weapons in case of confrontation. Okay, so this went against the fact that the city of Washington, D.C. was trying to deal with a, gun, a gang epidemic and a murder epidemic that they had. And they said, nope, you guys can't do that because you're infringing upon the Second Amendment. This ruling only dealt with the right to have um, self-defense in the home. But it was, and it was, and it only dealt with the District of Columbia. But it was seen as a pretty big victory for the NRA, and it opened the door for the case that you're going to focus on today, McDonald v. Chicago, which happens in 2010. Um, in the the Heller decision, only struck down what was happening in the District of Columbia, and that was a law banning handguns. But the McDonald decision, which you're going to focus on today, made it clear that this was a new right that the right to own a weapon was a fundamental one and established it as the highest constitutional order, which is a big deal. Um, the McDonald case um, doesn't just deal with the, with the Second Amendment. It also deals with the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment has the Due Process Clause. And when the Due Process Clause is used, it means that it extends to everyone in the country and that the states have to interpret it the same way. And so previous to the McDonald case, the Second Amendment wasn't incorporated. After the McDonald case, it was. The McDonald de decision significantly strengthened the Second Amendment. The NRA has effectively used the courts as a vehicle to get their agenda enacted, and they were a major push behind the Heller case and a major push behind the McDonald case. And they continue to push for more Supreme Court decisions in their favor. Um... In 2013, they filed a petition for certiorari, um, and, and they, feel they, they were part of a certiorari case that was, applied, that was applied to the Supreme Court. Um, they filed an amicus curiae brief as well as helped with the legal expenses for the case. And in their 
Amicus Curie Brief, they argued the framers' decision to enshrine the Second Amendment and the court's decisions recognizing that the right it secures as both individual and fundamental are decisions with consequences. One obvious consequence is that individuals above the legal age of, mat- of majority cannot be denied any meaningful ability to purchase the quintessential means for exercising the core individual right. This court should grant certiori and reaffirm the fundamental nature to the Second Amendment. Now, the Supreme Court denied that case in 2014. In 2017, the Supreme Court denied two other applications to get cases on appeal. Um, And what the Supreme Court hasn't ruled on is what are your rights as a gun owner outside of your home? Like, is it legitimate for a state government to have a policy that you have to have, that you can have or can't have a concealed handgun? Or is it legitimate for... Um, there would be dip- other types of limitations on the Second Amendment. Most constitutional scholars feel the court will need to address this issue, but for now, there's no national precedent on this aspect. You're right as a gun owner outside of the home on the Second Amendment. But obviously, that will come in future times.